Hi, I'm Andrew from the Glazer Tutoring Company, and today I would like to teach you how to write an equation for a rational function with these given characteristics. We have vertical asymptotes at x is equal to 5, and x is also equal to negative 5. We have x-intercepts at 2 and negative 1, and we have a y-intercept at 4, basically. All right? So the first thing is, what that in the world is a radical function? A uh, radical function is basically a function where you have some polynomial in the numerator, and then also some polynomial in the denominator. All right, that's basically what a rational function is. Now, when you're dealing with the vertical asymptotes, okay, those are going to be basically the values you're going to use to find the factors of the denominator. Remember, vertical asymptotes on a graph uh, basically indicate values of x that are not possible. And the only thing that makes a rational function here not possible is if there's a zero in the denominator, right? You can't divide by zero. So in other words, if I know I have a vertical asymptote at five, meaning x being equal to five, I know x can't be five. Now the only way to write that now in the denominator is to say x minus five, right? Because remember, if x is equal to positive five, which it says it is here as a vertical asymptote, and I take five and I minus five from it, I get zero. All right, And then the same thing goes for this uh, vertical asymptote as well. That's going to now be x plus 5. Because if this is negative 5, you plug in your negative 5 here, plus 5, that's a 0. And again, that makes the denominator a 0. All right. So in other words, you can literally just look at your vertical, vertical asymptotes, can't even speak, but your vertical asymptotes there, and simply just plug them in and alter the signs. All right. Now, turns out similarly, we can look at the x-intercepts the same way, basically. You have x-intercepts, you don't have to worry about the y value because, I mean, that's the definition of an x-intercept. y must be zero, all right? So these values of x, the two and the negative one, are basically the values you're going to use and change their sign again. In other words, I'm going to, if my x-intercept is a two, then what I'm gonna write is x minus two. And again, I'm going to then do the same thing here to do x plus one. One. Now, why does that work? Well, again, it's the same idea. The x-intercepts occur when the function's value is zero. The only way this function becomes zero is if the numerator is zero. All right? So that's the idea, that we have to somehow figure out what to write down uh, in order to make the numerator zero. So if the x is 2, you plug 2 in there, and that 2 minus 2 is 0. So that takes care of that. So you can think of x-intercepts, you just have those numbers, and then you find basically the factors, all right? So vertical asymptotes, x-asymptotes. Oh boy, today's gonna be a long day. Um, uh, we took care of those, and now the next thing is the y-intercept, all right? The y-intercept has to now occur at four. Now, what does that mean? Well, remember, the y-intercept on a graph, right? If you think about a graph, and you have whatever function you have, I'm just making this up. The y-intercept is the value of y where the function crosses the y-axis, right? So this is saying that it occurred at four in this problem. So what I know that's special about this point is that x must be zero, okay? x must be zero. So that's what I'm going to do, all right? I know the function's value has to be four when each and every x is zero. So what I'm now going to do, and you, you do this one last basically, you don't do it first, okay? You have to do it last. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to plug in zeros everywhere I have my x. All right. Hopefully things are going well. Okay. Nice conversation. So now that we plugged in all the zeros, I'm just going to now simplify this. And we're going to see something kind of strange happen. We're going to have 4 is equal to now in the numerator. And somehow this, <laughs> as I look back, I always try to check my work. That turned into a negative should be positive, right? So the numerator should be a negative two. The denominator here should be a negative five. What? 25, just kidding, haha. Uh -huh. And it's double negative, so you're gonna turn that into a positive, right? It's a good life lesson. Turn the negative into a positive. Now, this obviously is not true, right? Four does not equal two 25ths. So it's like, uh-oh, what are we gonna do? The whole idea is this, that when you're finding the you're, you're basically finding now, uh, you know that this whole right-hand side has to equal 4. 
We know that has to be true. So what's going? To, what I'm going to do here is I'm going to put in a little constant. Put a little constant, a little unknown, a little variable. Okay? So that's basically what I'm doing the whole time. I'm saying, what is this constant I have to multiply by? Now, whether you put it on the right-hand side there or on the left, it really doesn't make a difference. But I'll, I'll write it on the... Um, because where we'll place it in in the formula at the end, traditionally we'll place it on the left. All right. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to solve this thing for the constant. So what we can do is we can multiply this side by 25 over 2, right? Because that's just going to cancel that whole fraction. And then whatever you do to the right, you got to do to the left. So it's 25 over 2. 25 times 4 is going to be 100. Divide that by 2. That's going to be 50. 50 is equal to our constant of C. So now what I'm going to do, I got all the pieces I need. So my original function up here, okay, can be written now as, get rid of the C, and I'm going to write 50. And that's it. That's the answer. Okay. Now you can, uh, you can, you know, uh, fact, uh, foil this on out if you like. Okay. You might not want it in factored form. So you can write it this way. You can leave the 50 here. Or you can bring the 50 up to the top. It really doesn't make a difference. All right, I'll just bring it up to the top. So we'll have 50. Then you got to foil this. X times X is going to be X squared. X times 1 is X. Then this negative 2 times X is going to be negative 2X. When you combine those, that becomes negative X. Right? And then you got the negative 2 and the 1, which becomes negative uh, 2. Cool? Hopefully I did that right. And then the denominator here. This is a perfect square, right? So that's easy. That's going to be 25 minus... Uh, <laughs> what? I wrote 2x, but I said the So 2x, it's going to be a long day. Long day. You ever have some of those days where it starts off and you're like, oh boy, what the hell is going to happen today? Yep, it's turning out to be one of those. So, but what did I say before? Take the negative, turn it into a positive. Okay, turn that frown upside down, my friend, because you're here with me doing math. No, don't cry. Don't cry. No, no, no. This is fun. This is fun. Anyway, um, so that's... That's what we do there. Same thing. X times X is going to be X squared. Then the X times the 5 is 5X. Then this is negative 5X. So that cancels. And then that's going to be negative 25. So this is basically then the answer. And what you can always do to check yourself is go to your calculator and now plug in that function. So we got 50 times X squared. Okay. X squared minus X minus 2 all being divided by, watch your parentheses, X squared minus then 25. And let's hit graph. And here's the function, okay? So what we, uh, it might be tough to see, so maybe I'll do zoom. Let's go to negative 50. I'll adjust the y's so we can see downward a little more, okay? And you can kind of see now that it's a little bit kind of messed up, but you can basically see that here's one, two, three, four, five. And that might be a little tough to see, but this function will never ever reach five negative 5, that is, nor will it reach positive 5. Those are the vertical asymptotes. That what we've, that's what we found. We also found that the y-intercept here is going to be 4. Now, it might be hard to see on the graph, so you can go to your table. Go to your table, and look, when x is 0, y is 4. Ha! Huh. And there it all is, all right? And then the x-intercepts, you can see also here that it was negative, negative 1 there and a positive 2. So that kind of, you know, that's basically it there, my friends. So listen, thank you so very much for tuning in. I really do appreciate it. Thank you so, so very much for all the support you guys give us. Um, we wouldn't be here without you, and we love doing what we do. So check out our channel, because we have thousands of other videos, not only here with math, but chemistry, physics, and we got a lot more coming. Take care.